She said, it's got to be clearly understood. This is 1988. It's got to be clearly understood. Teenagers are just not old enough to be parents. The more complex a civilization is, the older a mother has to be in order to cope with that complexity. Now, I'm not aware of any effective public health messages to that effect. We'll talk about smoking and drinking and seat belts, but we won't provide young people with critically important information about their possible paths to the future. We need to develop further family service centres, or and I'm sure that Fano Aura is definitely a move in the right direction in getting this, this recognition, as I said before, that families' needs don't follow ministerial boundaries, and we, we can't carry on with our silos. We need to recognise and respect parents' capacity to create a positive future for themselves and their children. And one way to do that is not the only way, because we've got some women sitting at the back for whom I have a profound admiration, and one of them who's given us kohanga reo, and the other who's given us multiple services. But I will talk to you before about rolling out hippie, and we can do that. And we need to rebalance the weighting between home and institution. Now, this is a quote I wanted to use in the last session, but of course couldn't. Cognitive stimulation by parents in the home, think hippie, is by far the most important influence on children's intellectual development. Now, the authors of that comment um, wrote in the journal Demography, and I've got all the, the details, but the article was entitled, The Mechanism Mediating the Effect of Poverty on Children's Intellectual Development. So what is the most potent tool? Cognitive stimulation by parents in the home. Yet, we currently devote $1.2 billion annually to institutions and $1.2 million, that is, one-tenth of one percent to an effective mechanism operating in New Zealand to enable parents to provide cognitive stimulation in the home. And there is no evidence, no compelling evidence, as Waldegrave and Waldegrave say, for the, the cognitive effects of that $1.2 billion investment. And then, of course, we pay multiple billions for the lifelong consequences of the educational failure of the children of the hard to reach. I don't think it makes sense. So I say, let's change that trajectory. Um, with HIPPY, we're reaching at the moment 1,750 families a year. We're itching to do more. You know, we've got, we, I, there are three women in, in my office who uh, direct, guide, train, s supervise, support the participants in all those 27 sites. Those three women, we'd have to add to their number a little bit. But the systems are there, the systems are in place to roll out through as many places as want. And as I said, you know, I, uh, why did I turn this off? Because I just want to show you that slide again. Ah, that, that's, that's the demographic breakdown. And just to show you where we're located in those locations. And the provider organizations are a range of iwi organisations, faith-based organisations, school-based, community-based. Hmm. I'm intrigued with the list of things you don't offer. When you're, yeah. when you're door knocking, what do they offer? What hey, isn't this brilliant? Look, I, I, I sat down with the people that do the door knocking and that train the door knockers. How do you get over the threshold? And... There's all kinds of ways. You know, if there's a child playing in the garden, it can be, hi, is your mum home? 
in one famous case it was, yeah, mum's inside but dad's in jail. Uh, but it doesn't matter because it's over the threshold. They're, our people are very respectful, but they are not frightened by anything. And if they're going to be frightened, then they're not going to be, uh, they're not going to be employed as hippie coordinators because it's no place for the fearful. They're not frightened of dogs. They're not frightened of anybody. If there are a group of women, uh, particularly in the Pacifica community, sitting under a, a tree somewhere, sitting and chatting, they'll mosey over and chat and say, are there any families around here with children around four? Um, their, their approach is always, to make it clear, as I said, that they're not from other institutions or anything, um, and to say, we've got something to talk to you about that will enable you to help your child do well in school. And as I said, we never focus on parenting. We don't eyeball them about their parenting. And we don't need to, because the effect is tangential. And so they're positive. And you know what, what um, one of our people said to me the other day? She said, look, we can be totally confident and we can smile because we know that we're not selling something out of the, you know, out of the, the uh, shop truck. We're selling something that will enable this woman to transform her family. So with that knowledge, so it's, it's not that we're not missionaries. We are missionaries, but a different kind of missionaries. We have a mission. Well, my um, second question, thank you, is a South Islander. That map saying that yeah. the country is very highly in South Islander. No, that, that map. That map is a reflection of the fact that for some years, the last uh, about three years, uh, the government was not receiving very good advice. So by using the Official Information Act, we have discovered what was wrong and we're in the process of, I hope, writing that. I can't tell you how many requests we've had from Christchurch, from Dunedin, from Invercargill, from Nelson. I mean, the need is huge. And there's much, much more need around New Zealand. Now, I just want to say something else, and particularly I'm addressing here Iri. Um, you know, Iri, that in the beginning there was a question of, are Hippie and Kohanga Reo in competition? Are they, is, the, is there a conflict here? And I've got to tell you that the outcome appears to be no, no competition, no conflict. Uh, we have developed bilingual materials, and uh, parents with children in Kohanga Reo and who are going on to Kura Kopapa Māori are often our keenest, keenest participants because they see that it is supporting them in what they're wanting to do, and with the provision of three beautiful storybooks in you know, bilingual, te reo Māori in English, they have uh, materials, a, a resource, that can help them develop the language that their child is developing. Ah, it's, it's a complex picture. The six which are in family service centres are funded through a vote for family service centres, which started in 1993 under the dreaded but in some ways maligned Ruth Richardson and Jenny Shipley. Um, but that funding stream has gone on. Uh, Fourteen of them are funded through um, something which had started with the, with the Ministry of Education in 1999 and has transmogrified over into MSD. And others, we, I, I go out begging. I go out begging, going to philanthropic trusts, going to individuals. The, uh, you know, the flyover path for the Auckland Airport Trust, the, the Auckland Airport Trust had to compensate communities underneath its flight path, and that provided us hippie Otara for three years. But after three years, don't know how we're gonna fund. So the, the uh, Waitamata District Health Board is funding four sites, or part funding four sites.